Welcome to Taiwan Context. I'm your host, Donovan Smith. Today, we're going to talk about the Taiwan-U.S. military relationship and a little bit about the diplomatic relationship as well. Today, I've got as my guest, Jason Pan, who's been a journalist here in Taiwan for 20 years, and he's done the, mil the military beat. So uh, he's knowledgeable here about the subject. And um, can, how about you tell us a quick little bit about yourself? <laughs> Yes, uh, good day, Donovan. Yeah, it's good to be here. Um, I'm Jason Pan. Uh, I'm born in Taiwan in uh, what was uh, what were the, uh, in the 1960s, uh, living in Taiwan here in Taipei. So that was under when there was the U.S. Uh, Vietnam military called a MAC, military, uh, U.S. Military Advisory Group uh, mm -hmm. in, in Taiwan. Um, later, I went to North America Studies and now... I've been working in Taiwan News and also for Taipei Times for the past 20 years. And um, I, in the past, I have covered about military issue and also about U.S.-Taiwan international relationships. So uh, good to be here, Donovan. Oh, actually, now you say that you, you worked with the Taiwan News. Was it still called the China News back then? Yes, uh, in the early 1990s, it was known as a China News. Yeah, yeah. Those are the two newspapers who are there to service uh, American uh, military personnel in Taiwan. Uh, first, they came actually during the Korean War in the 1950s. And of course, it was a U.S.-Vietnam uh, War in, in the Vietnam, but there was a lot of service. And also, of course, uh, the whole setup, they were supply. Well, both Air Force maintenance, but also there was also CIA and all that military advisors in Taiwan in the 1960s. Mm -hmm. So, um, but there was also two, there was actually the two newspaper in the time for service American person. One is a morning paper, one's afternoon paper. That was China Post and the China News. Mm -hmm. And later 1990s, uh, eBay, the Taiwanese uh, food giant, they bought China News and they turned it into Taiwan News. And so I was, one of it, a reporter for for uh, uh, later, I become the uh, Taiwan News, and um, but at the time there's also of course uh, other uh, me, uh, sort of media uh, outlets for you know to service American personnel. For example, ICRT used to be U.S. Armed Forces Network Taiwan, and that was for, to of course there was a massive American <laughs> presence in Taiwan at the time. Story, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, at least in 1960 and up to the 70s. Uh, 1979, the, yeah. Yeah, before mm -hmm. break of a uh, diplomatic relationship under Jimmy Carter. Yeah, a lot of people forget there was a big military, U.S. military presence here, and it had a lot of impact on uh, m local music. And, oh, uh, definitely. Yeah. There's bases all around Taiwan, let me tell you. Air Force bases, CCK in Taichung, also the uh, Tainan Air Base. There was a, a what uh, Air America space, a lot of service maintenance. Mm -hmm done for uh, Vietnam, uh, air, all these uh, bombers and also some Hewitt uh, helicopter the maintenance was done at the CCK, the Chinchengang air, uh, Airport and also Tainan Airport. But there's also a naval base, a lot in Kaohsiung and uh, Kilong. And, mm -hmm. and uh, in Taipei, there's a lot, well, of course, administration political center for uh, American, of course, uh, AIT. I think there was still diplomatic relationship under uh, Chiang Kai-shek, the ROC, I think there was still uh, diplomacy with the uh, U.S. at the time. Is, is that so, uh, Donovan? Uh, yeah, I mean, they had diplomatic relations up until 1979. Uh, so, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, so there was an embassy here and all that. So Now, AIT, the American Institute on Taiwan, the, the de facto embassy, they just, uh, they just uh, created a, memo a memorial. Yes, there was... Um this is all part of a visible presence, both diplomatic and also in terms of a military presence, I would say, because uh, AIT recently, uh, head of uh, AIT director, Brent Christensen, he unveiled a memorial uh, just this past week. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was to honor the 126 U.S. service member who lost their lives uh, they were uh, fighting for Taiwan against the Communist China since 1949. Mm -hmm. Now, 1949, around the era, that period was when the KMT under Chiang Kai-shek, their so-called Nationalist Army, they lost the civil war against the Mao Zedong and his uh, uh, 
People Liberation Army, the Communist Party, and they sort of more or less fled to Taiwan because、uh, you know the Communist Party and uprising against KMT, they basically took over Taiwan.、Uh, sorry, basically the they took over China. So KMT troops and what remain of their political、uh, elite, they have to flee. They came to Taiwan, but it was under help by U.S. warships. All the massive refugee and、uh, KMT troops. It、mm. was so at that time. There was 1949 was sort of the point starting. There were、uh, U.S. was a warship fleet helping Taiwan. Of course, later on to help defending Taiwan. Taiwan at the time was known as Free China as an <laughs>、yeah. unsinkable aircraft carrier, the bulwark of democracy, Free China against Red Communist China at the time. <laughs> But of course, there's a lot of To do with number one, the U.S. Army military presence in Taiwan, but also the U.S. Seventh Fleet under the Pacific Command. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> all right. Well, let's let's move to more recent、uh, activities now. The Chinese in the last they've been really increasing this a lot in the last few months. But these there's been Chinese incursions. Um. Now, can you tell us a little bit about what those are and why they're doing them? Okay. Um, the China with the PL PLA Air Force, they have been doing a lot of patrolling bombers, and also the、uh, their training run. They they call it routine run, but they've been sort of、uh, encircling Taiwan. As actually, like they go to the north toward the、uh, Miyako Strait and also South、uh, Bashi Channel. Uh, that Taiwan between the Philippines, the north of Miyako between Taiwan and Okinawa Island, but also they've been coming near the median, the median line of、uh, Taiwan Strait and the Davis Line. Oh, they, oh I didn't know that.、Oh, yeah, the, it was, it's actually named after an American、uh, military commander or admiral or something like that.、Okay. But yeah, it's、okay. the usually nowadays you call it the median line, but it used、yeah. to be more commonly referred to as the Davis Line. Okay. Anyway, sorry. David Sign. Okay. <laughs> Throwing so, in that little, little,、yeah. little bit miscellaneous bits、okay. of history here. Yeah. <laughs> They've been doing that very, very often in the, this past half year,、mm-hmm. and more increasing in the last few months. And every time they done so, in fact, Taiwan's military, uh, uh, defense ministry (MMD), uh, Taiwan, uh. Na- Ministry of National Defense (MND) they've been putting up press release saying, "Okay, we know they are there. We've been tracking them. We're monitoring them. Let people be assured." But there have been also report that the PLA air,、uh, this、uh, patrol airline、uh, airplane, ah,、uh, they've been actually deviating, sometimes encroaching just across a little bit on that median Taiwan Strait or Davis Line.、Mm-hmm. Um. What people are saying is, China want to push the envelope, see how far they could push it, and you know, and but of course Taiwan and U.S. they are actually they kind of one countering this. They've been actually very close encounter. In fact, one or two incident recent weeks is that Taiwan、uh, war airplane, some of the jet fighter have been locked down to the, and also try to. Uh, dispel them, saying we we have you in line, and you know you have to leave airspace through the broadcasting, radio broadcasting. So at, at sometimes it's been very tense, but all, we've been also seeing report from, say,、uh, military and also some legislator. They said, well, we have report from U.S. They are U.S. is sending their bombers and also their、uh, or sort of a radar, the airplane, you know, patrol plane from Guam and also from the、uh, Okinawa, the、uh, Katana Air Force. Katana Air Force is the closest、uh, the U.S.、Uh, base was,、uh, you know, the,、uh, a massive air, air airplane presence, air jet fighter and patrol bombers, and they've been coming and they've been all sorts of report how they have been coming through Taiwan in the along the Taiwan Strait and also around Taiwan. So they say it's kind of a how do I say this a、uh, chase line,、uh, the chasing away the China、uh, jet. All these patrol tr- plane. Also, China keep and U.S. saying, "Oh, we're just routine fly," you know.、Mm-hmm. But I don't think that routine. And from political pundit, from some people expert, they said China is trying to 
Number one is flex this muscle. They want to assert their claim in the South China Sea and the East China Sea, some of the islands. But number two is they want to take away the focus from their domestic problem. There are a lot of problems internally. Economy is going back because of coronavirus. There's a lot of problems. The coronavirus, you know, the, they have to shut down their own and they have to all kind of, you know, a lot of their cities and uh, uh, are shut down by business. But also they are, if you watch the news, they have also a lot of flooding problems. Mm-hmm. This so, is internally in China. Internal yeah. problems. Mm-hmm. So they're, in a way, destabilizing in the society. So some people saying Xi Jinping or at least uh, uh, Communist China leadership want to shift away the focus from internal, uh, you know, their matters. And also to show the China, the citizenry saying, okay, we're defending the nation. We are, you know, try to, uh, we are a powerful nation, you know, uh, that China, we still are a very powerful military presence. So no worry about this domestic, you know, all the flooding and starting by economy. That's a minor when compared with to assert our national sovereignty, uh, take back our claim to, you know, say, you know, in uh, say the beautiful border with India, you know, uh, all those places, South Tibet, they call also Taiwan and also some of the islands in South China Sea. So as I said, you know, China, they have a, experiencing a lot of domestic problem, natural hazards and the coronavirus and disaster flooding. So want to sort of, uh, asserting their power for the central leadership for the Communist Party. Yeah. Um, actually, I'm just going to throw in a little bit of context here, by the way, about the the, the Taiwan median line in the Taiwan Strait, the Davis line. Um, that was actually created as kind of an unofficial because actually the, the crossing the line itself by international law is not illegal. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this line is basically the center point between t- the t- in the Taiwan Strait between Taiwan and China. And unofficially, it's been considered very bad form to cross that line. And that was something that was kind of enforced by the U.S. 7th Fleet going back to the 1950s. Right. So recently, the Chinese side has been breaching that Mm -hmm. quite frequently. And the U.S. recently breached it on the other side, Mm -hmm. which I thought was an interesting move. But we'll get back to the U.S. in in just a minute. Um, Now, why do you think, other than to try and create an, an, uh, obviously you mentioned the internal issues. Uh, I know that they conduct uh, military exercises. Some of them are serious. Some of them are just propaganda moves, both for the internal thing and also to try and intimidate Taiwan. But there, there's actually practical military reasons why they're doing some of this stuff. Yeah. Well, the practical military is that uh, is that they number one they want to test uh, Taiwan's military preparedness. Also, they could using all these uh, airplane. They could get the numbers in terms of the uh, radar station locking on. Because they, they do know Taiwan has a radar station also uh, working with the U.S. and, you know, try to take... Taiwan is a very in a strategic geopolitical presence in terms of radar station and picking up all the signals, electronic signals. But Taiwan also testing a lot of uh, missile, you know, uh, that, that Ch- China is afraid of. So they China is, of course, they try to see... They, they could, of course, you know, see how Taiwan's... I mean, uh, number one, the preparedness. Uh, but to, in a practical sense, is that Taiwan's military is actually very uh, tiring for them because every time another alert, oh, uh, uh, PLA, PLA patrol uh, coming in uh, nearby Taiwan or uh, Taiwan Strait, these pilots and the menace crew, they have to scramble and they all get their fly up and, you know, try yeah, to, to intercept them. them. Yeah. yeah. It's actually a lot of more uh, tear and wear on the airplane, also maintenance. And mm-hmm. also, of course, the uh, it, it grinds on the uh, pilot. They have to really be alert, you know, uh, all the time. But number two is that China has been both producing its own, uh, aircraft and also I think they purchased from uh, USSR. Well, mm. they don't. You know, it's a uh, Russia now. They have to test out these uh, military hardware jets and also all these uh, missile that come with it. See how they pair up. How they you know in terms of defenses, the electronics, defense. Because China is right now on the currently. There's also another two other major flashpoint 
right now, South China Sea. Of course, uh, the main South China Sea, China is building up a lot of islands or coral reef into they say the permanent island. So U.S. are contesting, saying these are international waters. So U.S. is sending air aircraft carrier warships through there. Of course, uh, Philippines and Vietnam and also other countries are also contesting that. But major one is China and U.S. is confrontation there. But the other flashpoint is right now at the very current this week is in the disputed border with India. There have been pushing, shoving, and also fighting with the uh, Indian Army and the line of control in those uh, Ladakh and also uh, Kashmir region. And there's also a couple other flashpoints in, uh, in, in that Himalaya region. China asserts control over Arunachal Pradesh, one of the northeast uh, India. I've been there, Assam and Arunachal Pradesh. China claim it as South Tibet. But of course, the people there who say, wow, well, no, we are now part of India, say, you know, we're Arunachal Pradesh. But the U.S. claim that because there's a couple uh, city religious center, uh, one place called Ta Wan, T-A-W-A-N, is one of a, a very major uh, Tibetan Buddhism uh, a center, religious center. In fact, Dalai Lama visited there and China lodged a very strong protest. So China right now is on the front. In fact, some military pundit in Taiwan, they say they could be close, very close to war, at least, uh, you know, land war in a disputed builder with India. India, of course, they also want to, be, we, are a, we are a superpower, we are not afraid of China, so let us dispute uh, against India right now. Uh, India, South China Sea, so I think China, they are a little bit, you know, Taiwan is, they think they, it's their internal uh, province, it's part of runaway so-called rebel presence, but U.S. has always saying, and international community saying, Taiwan Strait is international water, which is important because Seventh Fleet have hit a safe, uh, safe passage. You know, Taiwan Strait is very important in terms of supply of uh, material and also oil, all kind of essential material for South Korea and uh, Japan. So that's an international shipping lane. So we have to keep, Taiwan and U.S. is in our interest to keep it open, international water, and not let China control as a, you know, as a, it's its own internal water. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, China seems to be picking trouble or fights, creating irritants with, yeah, I mean, India, yeah. you've got the South China Sea, Taiwan, of course, sure. the Senkakus or the Diaoyutai right, right. Islands, yeah. Japan. Um, now, the United States is, is as, as you kind of alluded to there, mm. have has been alarmed by this. Yes. And so what are some of the moves that the, the United States have, has been making to counter China? You mentioned some of them, uh, sending yeah. aircraft okay. carriers and yeah. ships through the Taiwan Strait, yeah. through the South China Sea. Yeah. Um, I, I also noticed that there has been uh, there have been reports recently of at least twice U.S. military planes flying over Taiwan itself. That's right. Um, but what are some of the most important moves, you think? Well, mm, right now under... Donald Trump administration with, uh, is that Secretary General? Uh, no, S uh, Secretary, of, Secretary of State Pompeo, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Under both of them, they have been making very strong concrete moves to open up diplomatic and military uh, diplomacy or ties with Taiwan. One of the most major is lifting this uh, so-called uh, restriction on U.S. high official visit to Taiwan. The most obvious thing is the uh, health secretary, Azar, who visited Taiwan just uh, you know la last month, and that was all led to the U.S. pork import issue. So in the coming days, uh, people say they will be opening up a, a so-called Taiwan-U.S. Uh, bilateral trade uh, talks. Mm -hmm. or, but on the other hand, they've been talking about this. All goes way back in the nineteen fifties since Korea War. There've been some presence, but massive presence. U.S. is during the Vietnam War, starting 1960s. So some people are saying, oh, maybe we'll go back to that, you know, welcome American soldier back to Taiwan, you know, good for economy, more uh, American presence. But the fact is that there have been, uh, AIT has been, used to be very, very uh, keeping mom on U.S.-Taiwan military uh, cooperation training. For example, Taiwan, they train, Taiwan pilot go to Arizona, some airplanes to train there. You know, Taiwan's buy, buy, buying the black, 
uh, Blackhawks and you know a lot of these uh, 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 helicopter fighters, you know, to Taiwan. The other thing is that, as I said, AIT used to be under the table about, but in the past month we have seen news and photographs clear and available to the public and the media mm -hmm. saying how oh oh you see the ROC flag and U.S. and there were some uh, U.S. Uh, military, some joint program or joint training with U.S. Marines. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They posted that video of them training together here in Taiwan, I That's think right. it was, um, which yeah. I think so it was here in Taiwan. Yeah. It's making them more open, open yeah. up about this. In fact, I've been told by some American uh, friends uh, in, in Taipei, they, they told me that, oh, uh, he, he know right now, he know before that U.S. Uh, uh, Marines have been working, helping conduct training Taiwan's uh, special forces here in Taiwan. And I'll tell you straight, I, I cover Taiwan uh, defense uh, for, for quite a few years, the Ministry of National Defense, right? Mm -hmm. They have uh, the annual called Han Guang, Yanxi, the annual Han Guang uh, military mm -hmm. drill, the major mm -hmm. one involving Air Force. All the military uh, media could see that there are foreigners sitting there, and some of these are diplomatic allies, Taiwan. Sure. But some of them, it's clear they are American advisor. They are mm -hmm. checking out, make sure the equipment functioning, all these U.S., you know. Of course, there's also U.S. Abram tanks mm -hmm. and also the weapon and, you know, the it's a bit of fighter helicopter. That's a big thing. So the presence is there, but people keep it on the table. Now it's they've been making open, clear. Yes, we have military ties. We have helping military advisor. It's going to come in more because in Taiwan, they are saying maybe we'll, they have been talking about even in the press, in the Taiwan's uh, uh, media saying, oh, maybe we'll see like American carrier ship warship docking in say, you know, uh, Zhuoying, the Kaohsiung area. It's up in the air. We know, who knows? Maybe it'll, it'll, it'll happen, maybe you are not, but I don't know. But it's, uh, it's <laughs> all uh, in the talks from, from what we heard. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 there's a few things that, um, as far as the, the docking, I know that the U.S. Congress is, has encouraged, it's the sense of Congress, but, you know, to um, encourage the U.S. Navy to send not a warship, but to send like a medical supply ship or something right. like that. So right. it's kind of symbolic. It's not a heavily right. armed ship or anything yeah. like that, but send that to um, yeah. Kaohsiung. A couple of actually specific things uh, out of AIT, which I, th I thought was interesting. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the, the the video of the joint training. Mm -hmm. They just put up, uh, just the other day, they posted up some photos of um, ROC jets mm -hmm. training with uh, doing um, in-flight uh, refueling, mm -hmm. over, you know, in Arizona. Right. And now that's significant because Taiwan doesn't have that in-flight Ref refueling mm -hmm. ability. They don't have that. They don't have that in the in Taiwan's military. So this mm -hmm. is very openly. They're doing joint training mm -hmm. on how to interoperate between the U.S. military and Taiwan together, right. and that I think is very significant because yeah. that clearly sends the message. And AIT put this up on the, on Facebook, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so basically making it absolutely clear to China that we're working yeah. together in case something happens. Yeah. Um, another report I saw, I only saw this in the Taiwan news. Um, so that's, that's only one outlet. So I'm not sure mm -hmm. if it's confirmed, mm -hmm. but that apparently for the first time, uniformed Taiwan military visited AIT in uniform ah. military officers. Now mm -hmm. I, I've only seen that one report, so mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know if it's confirmed or not. Um, yeah. So AIT, op since AIT opened, there've been, circulating in Taiwan media saying it's de, uh, de facto an American embassy. It's done to the scale size, the requirement of a U.S. embassy. But there have been Taiwan reports saying there, have been, there are U.S. Marine or, uh, as, as a unit there patrolling mm -hmm. us in U.S. embassy around. Although Taiwan is very safe, but mm -hmm. you know, you never know. There's, but um, there have been increasing more yeah military presence in that and all i might want to add is that the, this just this past week the the uh, taiwan us are talking about how taiwan is going to uh, a uh, reconfigure as a very important supply chain 
for technology and IT. So that's very important because, uh, as you know, from Vietnam War and Second World War, um, it used to be conventional war. Now, now a lot of this IT technology have chips embedded into all kind of machines and you know weapons. And Taiwan is very, very important in terms of you know computers, TSMC, and so Taiwan is, as I said, it's a very uh, essential in terms of IT and uh, computer chip you know supplier. And US wants to be that Taiwan be part of the whole, you know, supply chain for computer chips, you know, because that's a lot of modern warfare and communication they're depending on. So that's the other aspect how Taiwan is, uh, I'm not saying cooperation, but some people say even deeper in, in terms of, you know, uh, integrating into or even, you know, a very close collaboration, a part of supply chain to the U.S. military, what in the old days we call military an industrial complex uh, with uh, Taiwan's help. I don't know whether that's proper to say yeah. that in these days. Well, some, I mean, by some standards, TSM, TSMC's chips are now the most advanced in the world. And uh, they've been, they're going to open up a plant in Arizona, mm. but it's, it's going to be one generation or so, I think, behind mm. the cutting edge ones, which are here in Taiwan. And everybody knows that China would absolutely love to get their hands on the most advanced tech. So Taiwan's continued survival, I think the U.S. has started to realize, is is more critical to its own uh, its own survival. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's right. You know, just TSMC alone is a major national security interest of the United States. Exactly. So yeah. So um, all right. So now there's been recently there's been. Um, Let's talk actually a little bit about going forward. We've only got a few minutes left. Mm -hmm. So some of the things that people have been talking about, what could happen in the relationship going forward. Mm -hmm. So what, what are some, what's some of the speculation you've been hearing about? We talked about the possibility of yeah, uh, warships, yeah. for example. That, that means opening up Taiwan's uh, war, uh, naval base, the main one in Zhuoying, Kaohsiung mm -hmm. area. That's where the Taiwan's Navy commands primary base, but there are also, of course, a military naval base in Iran and other ports around. But open up to to docking for U.S. You know, carrier ship uh, group, also some warships. But the other thing is also increased training. There have been also talks about Taiwan joining the the, the uh, RIMPAC. That's a big Pacific, uh, annual big Pacific, involved a lot of countries. That, Biggest that, one, yeah. Yeah. But this, bit, there oh. was a lot of talk about that this summer, but mm. Taiwan did not get an invite. Mm. So that I was see. disappointing. Yeah. But there have been, as I said, a lot of uh, uh, behind the scene cooperation, you know, the uh, training for, uh, as I said, F-16 war, uh, jet fighters, Taiwan, and also the warships, you know, Blackhawks and uh, Kiowa and also the, uh, you know, these. Uh, but the other thing is continue on if, as uh, Donald Trump administration, a lot of people in Taiwan, both business and political and general public, are hoping for normalizing, towards normalizing relationship with the U.S. You know, they cut off the relations with China under, you know, Jimmy Carter, which the, the thing whole started with Vietnam because, uh, you know, the, uh, Kissinger and Nixon, they wanted to play, play the China card. They were fighting because the, the Soviet Union was a dominant communist power. But China is also pretty big. So they want to pull China they are starting with, uh, you know, uh, building up links so they could sort of also as a kind of counter force because Vietnam not involved. So that's helping a U.S. Vietnam force. But along that path, 1979 under Jimmy Carter, they cut off diplomatic relations with Taiwan. Yeah, and pulled but out the bases. Yeah. Prior to that, 1960s and 50s, as generally in the Second World War, China as a, under ROC, and also, of course, so it was a part of the whole... Western ally nation fighting against the, you know, the Axis Japanese, uh, Nazi Germany, and Italy. But anyway, some people are saying we should we, maybe we could go back to that during the Vietnam War, 1960, all those American uh, bases, you know, naval, air force, in the you know, combined training with, uh, you know, the military. So we're seeing more of that. But there have been a lot of, uh, of course, uh, more. There, uh, on the concrete side, there will be going to be just more weapon arms sales. Taiwan purchasing from U.S. anyway, so that's good for the economy and good yeah. for the uh, uh, defense contractors in any case in the near future. Well, I can add a couple quick details. Um, 
apparently uh, Taichung here in Taichung mm-hmm. is the only uh, in in the East Asia Pacific region has has now has the only maintenance center for F sixteens. And that's here in Taichung. Mm. Um, but something that may actually put kind of a fire under under the, you know, un, un, mm. under the U.S. military, mm-hmm. is if Duterte in the Philippines, yeah. okay. he keeps he talked about oh we're going to cancel, you know the the right of you know U.S. military to dock here mm-hmm. and refuel and all that stuff, and then he sort of flip flops back and mm-hmm. forth. If he actually goes through with that, mm-hmm. which we don't know if he will, but if he mm-hmm. does, that means that the U.S. can't do maintenance, can't refuel, mm-hmm. can't you know get food and all that mm-hmm. good stuff, and have R and R in the Philippines. If that happens, mm-hmm. you know that may actually push them to use Taiwan as a base right. for right. that. Now I know because I read, uh, you know, communist propaganda from mm-hmm. China, um, and you know that they basically they 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 would flip if if mm-hmm. that happened. Mm-hmm. Um, um, but yeah, but yeah. So, um, just uh, just a last question here before we go. Okay, what would you like to see happen going forward in cooperation between the U.S. and Taiwan militarily? Well, uh, just generally speaking, as a Taiwanese person, and I'm not representing my newspaper or anything, but represents. I think majority of you, Taiwan is normalizing relationship. Maybe we could build up diplomatic relationship. Taiwan is built up on basis of freedom, personal liberty, free election, democracy, the same as most of advanced countries, Western Europe and Canada, US, Australia. We should be in the same camp. Taiwan should never be back under communist control. Not back, they never control us anyway, but China just claim in rhetoric how Taiwanese people in the history, you know, used to be, you know, under Dutch and also Japanese empire. Taiwan's are never part of communist China control anyways. And Taiwanese people has this unique uh, makeup that there was a lot of Austronesian, the Aborigines, the Pingpu people. They're not Chinese people at all. It's a big mix of a lot of, you know, different people, a distinct Taiwanese people and culture. And a lot of people, who, international people come to Taiwan, they say, yeah, Taiwanese, People they come to Taiwan, the society culture is entirely different from China for those people who travel both. So I would like to see, yeah, normalizing relationship. Because when I was young, it was Taiwan 1960, it was uh, under Vietnam War. There's a lot of American soldier presence, and uh, it could be, you know, it, that was during the Cold War era. But if China gets strong, powerful, you know, they're the economic, military strong, and uh, Taiwan has to choose sides. And we, most Taiwanese, People will choose to be on the democratic, the uh, you know the 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 same democratic society alliance as you know as Japan, South Korea, you know Western alliance uh, together with the U.S. and uh, Canada. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for joining us, Jason. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining us here on Taiwan Context. It's kind of an irregular show, but I hope it give, helps give something of a picture of the of the context of Taiwan and. Be sure to check in from time to time and see if we've got a new one. All right. Be sure to support us on Patreon. That's a big deal to us here. And check us out on report.tw and hit like and subscribe. This has been brought to you by the Taiwan Report. For more content like this, become our patron at report.tw. 喜欢我的台湾狗了